is up, lovely people? My name is Rue, and I am here with the lovely Memberly. Hello. And today, we're going to be um, doing something a little bit different. Um, this is not my usual content, but um, ever since I watched um, the version 2.0 music video for Honkai Star Rail, which apparently is the trailer, um, it, um, it got me wanting to analyze it because I feel like there are some frames that got me predicting into um, what kind of story Panacani would be for Honkai Star Rail. So um, I thought I invite Memberly to um, to um, analyze with me since she also um, she's basically um, a content creator for um, Honkai Star Rail. And um, by the way, her her links to her channel will be down below in my description, so you can go mm -hmm. ahead and check her out. And yeah, she is she has lots of Honkai Star Rail stuff and other variety stuff, so please go ahead and check her out. But other than that, uh, Memberly, you ready to mm -hmm. analyze this music video? Absolutely, I've watched it 50 times, I <laughs> love watching it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let us do this. All right, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna watch this um, music video um, one time, even though we have watched this already. And then after that, I was thinking we'll we'll um, start it over, but we'll go frame by frame and probably discuss something. Um, and memberly, feel free to let me know. To f feel free to chat whatever's on your mind as well. Yeah, will do. All right. Um, okay, so first we're gonna watch the whole thing. Here we go. The music is always so cool. It's and, a banger. It's yeah. an actual banger. <laughs> I like how they swap between the two characters as well. Like sometimes it's the female, sometimes it's the male. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I got that a little loud for me. <laughs> Marco? I yeah, I, I know you want her. <laughs> I saw your video. I saw, I literally, I saw, I saw her. I was like, yes, she's the character for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's so much to unpack in this trailer. Like, you have to watch it a few times to really, like, catch everything. Exactly. <laughs> the fact that the trash can's becoming an enemy is like probably one of the best things about this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Animated more. Oh, that's that's so cool. Okay. Honestly. Um, Amazing. <laughs> yeah. I need to ask, did you have you, because I know you didn't um when you reacted to this trailer, but have hmm. you um re have you watched uh took a peek at the um what do you call that? The live stream? Yes, I have. So I have a good idea of like what's coming. First off first off, we're getting twenty free pools. Yeah, I know. They're spoiling. Right? They are spoiling the crap out of us. And the worst the scary thing for me. This is not even the anniversary for Honkai Star Rail. I if know. it's this good when a new region comes out, what, or dare I ask, are they going to do for the anniversary? I know, exactly. I feel like we were, we were treated as, um, in the, like, you know, um, we're, we were treated as if we were already in an anniversary when it's like, um, I thought, I thought, um, Honkai Star Rail ca came out around April, and it's still, mm -hmm. like, January, so why are we already treated? But anyway... I forget I forget what his bloody name is now. This one? Well, 
Yeah, I forget what his body so, name is. Like, it's like Adventurine or, so, uh, Adventurine or something like that. I would say that. And so um, for him, I know we, we might get into it to your video, um, which, mm. by the way, I'll link it down below, um, friends who are watching this video. Um, but um, but apparently he's um, uh, he is part of the IPC. So Yeah. Which is the same, um, so the Interstellar Peace Corporation or something like that. Yeah, so, so, so like, he knows, like, he probably knows, like, Topaz and all that. And, uh, He's probably a... Yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're, I would think so, with how his drip marketing looks. He might be the comedic, fun type in the story, maybe? I don't know. He seems like, with him dancing around here, he could probably bring some fun into the Pentaconi story. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, I feel like he's going to be involved involved in at least one of the uh, gameplay events because one of the things that I do think that Genshin, Karalak versus uh, Honkai Star Rail is the whole you can go back and play the previous events that's already come out. So for if you start a new account, say, today, uh, following that trailer, you're going to be able to basically experience all of the lore. Yeah. Um obviously meet characters like topaz and stuff like that as well which is great when it comes to like not forgetting about certain characters um i do think he is probably going to be more of the mysterious kind of character like mm -hmm. topaz is quite you know open and she did mention at some point during the initial gameplay event which i actually still need to get out um that some of the other members were not quite as forgiving as her and he does kind of give me that bit of a persona personally mm -hmm could be just the way he's dressed could but be. or just the fact that yeah every time i've had a blonde he, uh, in my life apparently they've been they've been a yeah. so it could just be biased but i i'm just getting a very kind of cocky vibe kind of like dr ratio in a way but maybe a bit more up front it, it's he's he's that type um that um he He's like smiling way too much and all that, but in, in yeah. inside of him, he's like he's like um, evilish in a way. I won't say evil, more like just a bad attitude, really. I that's oh, what I would say. Yeah. Think. Yeah. All right. Let me see here. I like this part here where when the camera frame um, goes goes around a little bit the the travel mm -hmm. the trailblazer is around here that that was i i didn't know that notice that in the first place when i watched <laughs> this so all this nice like music video thing that um people have been like calling this um like mmd music video so like the anime ish um anime music video but anyway okay so here's oh, yeah. this one here all right i see some stuff with these two they look alike to me i think they might be i'm guessing sibling vibe yeah kind of like ayako ayato and ayaka from um genshin impact kind of like that mm. so um that's what i'm getting at um I remember you figuring out his name Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or something. <laughs> I knew it was some form of day of the week. I just couldn't remember which day it was. We have no idea of what's her name. I think her name is Robin. Hmm. I could be wrong. And then I know, um, I know the yeah. environment has something to do with, like, champagne and all that stuff, so... Yeah, like, obviously, if you want to go more into it in my video, we definitely can. But Panacone is actually supposed to be, like, an uh, area of, of, like, dreamscapes. Yeah, I, yeah. Exactly. So that does give the kind of very dreamscape vibe. I did also get, like, a very, um, again, I could be biased because my husband is American. Um, mm -hmm. But I was getting a very big, like, Las Vegas kind of vibe from this trailer. Yeah, and... But there's and... not, it feels like there's more nightlife than daylife, if that makes sense. It's more, it's also, like, uh, yeah, it does seem like that. And for this one, they are driving... They are riding some kind of like a rich looking um, car. So like mm. they're they might be like higher status into the story. So mm. in terms of if they're going to be like good or not, I honestly don't know. For, for me it could go it could go um in any way really. Like um, Yeah. 
it could it could they could probably cause a little trouble to the trailblazer or they could be allies mm. i don't know i i can't really see much on that but yeah it can go either way for me like for example look at the girl character for i'm gonna assume that her name is robin but obviously i'm sure the comments will correct us if we're wrong here yeah but when i first saw her i kind of got a march a march 4th or Sorry, March 5th. <laughs> I was kind of getting a five-star March vibe. I would genuinely not be shocked if March has got something to do with the story. Um, like a very big part of the story, because obviously we'll see it later on in the video, but we do see her there as well. Yeah. We know from the ending of the Cien Joe that Himiko will be um accompanying us uh to uh Panacone. Mm -hmm. And the thing is this is her reverse. So I'm terrified because I just hope they don't kill anybody off. Because according to what I've been told, obviously a potential spoiler here, maybe, um, they are not afraid to kill off characters in Honkai and Pat Third. Now I've not played the game, so I don't know that myself. Okay, I was I was about to uh, I was about to ask you that. If you have played, I was about to ask you. <laughs> yeah. I'm planning on playing it later on in the year when I've kind of caught up because my content list is like the the length of a llama at the moment. <laughs> the um what do you call it? A little spoiler alert for those who didn't um, play the Shianzo Lafu one. Um, that one example of of um, Honkai going like um, crazy with some, you know, some sad moments or like shocking moments. Um, Ting Yun. Ting Yun is one. Um, we oh, we oh, officially yeah official we we just know we truly in my opinion we truly don't know what is her status but because it's been said that um that it was who was that 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 one boss um that one boss the Fantilia. hot boss there you go Fantilia yeah um, the hot boss instantly <laughs> identified <laughs> That Ting Yun was basically like a puppet for for that one, but the way they portrayed that scene, in, um, that was like so fr freaking deadly and all that. It was uh, yeah, that's shit out of me. I yeah. had nightmares that night after playing that. <laughs> so it's like I know, I know. It's like um, it's something that Genshin does not have, at least for now. I mean, it it. Genshin Let's not jinx does. it, mate. If something happens to Tartaglia, who is the biggest red flag in that bloody game, I, I think know. me and you will both scream. I know, I know. Same here. The um, cries. I know. <laughs> but um, in, in a way, no, Genshin does portray like a little bit of shocking moment, but it's not, mm. it doesn't really like really portray it out there like Honkai Star Rail. Like, mm -hmm. like you don't, really see it see them like get get um killed they get the screen kind of like gets covered in a way when it actually happens or something these two i feel like these guys will will be a higher um status um in mm -hmm. the in the in the the pentaconi um how high i have no idea on that um i don't know yet if they will be allies or, or, um, what do you call this? Or, um, like enemies. enemies. Or maybe in the middle. Like, maybe they'll be sus of us for a bit. And then, and then later they'll be, like, all good. Kind of like Japard in a way. Like, Japard and Bronya are two very, very good examples mm -hmm. of that. You know, like, Bronya was, like, after us. But they kind of turned. I mean... Out of the two, my personal opinion, I feel like the girl is more likely to ally with us versus the bloke. The bloke kind of looks like he just don't care. He just wants to go home and play video games. Like, he doesn't look like he gives a crap. You know... But the girl has got, like, a genuine nice smile on her. You know, when now that you think about that... Okay, so I always like going, like, symbolizing the a symbol... Well, some Whatever the scene kind of symbolize something. So, like... So, like... In a way, this the girl kind of like um, is more shown out. So like she's a little bit more in the bright side. Um, she's mm -hmm. more out there. So you're you could be right. The she could be more of a friendly one and out there. And the guy here, he's he 
she's more exposed out to the scene while he um while he's kind of like not really too exposed you only see his side profile you don't really see him very fully and and yeah. if is it it could be just me let me also take out my camera for a little bit um but but um he's kind of like it's it's somewhat darkish to me on his side so like so like that could i and I, i'll put a disclaimer but there's a chance that i could be wrong this is just us discussing what we predict and what what we think based just based on this video but yeah ba but this one um it's like in the shadows and he could be like just it could be like Ayato, where he just works in the shadow in a good way, or like he's more like he's more like he will be suspicious, or like he would he would be using his higher status to bring trouble to the trailblazer. But he's like on the dark side of this of this scene, yeah. and she's more on the bright side. So you could be right; she could be more of an ally than the guy. So that's almost. Yeah, I'm also getting the vibe that the guy... Like, if, if we had to pick between the these two pla characters here, I would personally think the male is the more... Probably the one who's got more control in the situation. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like... um Obviously, I don't... I, I, actually, the UK royal family could be a very good example of this. Like, even though the government is the ones who tend to make the decisions, the royal family is kind of there just for the face of the country. And that mm -hmm. does give me that vibe here. So, like, she's the face of Padaconi... And then Sunday there is kind of actually the one who makes the rules and is, you know, managing everything, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So she's kind of more used as like an idol slash figure mm -hmm. than like actual, you know, politics, basically. Exactly. I'll let the next scene play out a little bit up to mm -hmm. up to something. And then there's something I'm I, I want to point out. No Go for it. Okay, so this one. All right. Um, I'm kind of trying to see what what is it that um hit misha on this one like um to me though i that's why i kind of like played it out more up to gallagher um mm -hmm. he's it's because um it kind of links items. to me it kind of links to me so like so like it when it when all the things fall down these look like suitcase so it makes me think that um possibly gallagher threw something at misha i think because yeah we because, because we, like no when it goes to gallagher the all the stuff are still falling so that's that's that was all the suitcases that misha have so i wonder if these two might have some kind of close bond in a way what kind of bond i have no idea maybe gallagher might be a jokester and and messing with misha i don't know i'm not that sure yet on that but i yeah the scene kind of links to me on that so i so it makes me wonder if they if they know each other in a way i'm have i'm looking like at you know the details with this one and there is a very, very high chance that that is some sort of hotel. Because we know that the Trailblazers have a habit of going to, like, accommodation on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, on her to Space Station, they kind of had, like, a little area for, like, like kind of like an infirmary. They had in Bellabog, they, they had the Goethe Hotel, both on the overworld and the underworld. Uh, Zienjo, they had the um, hotel... Um, there as well before Tinyun met them with Deeting to go to Stargaze and Navalia to track down Kafka. You can tell I've played the story multiple times because I remember all of this <laughs> perfectly. Um, so this to me is suggesting some sort of hotel scene. Mm -hmm. So Misha is probably going to be like, you know, some sort of like cleaner, maybe. Mm -hmm. And Gallagher could potentially be the boss of the hotel, maybe. Ooh, that could be it. Yeah, so definitely, for sure, confirm, um, Misha is some kind of, um, not only like a hotel door person, but um, if, 
you have seen the gameplay in the live stream. The Misha is going to have a mop as his weapon. So, <laughs> so that's definitely a clean cleaner. I don't know what does. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a cleaner. Yeah. Um. But absolutely. But um. Uh, in terms of the Gallagher being a boss, that I didn't. I never thought of that. That could be right. It's um. He is some kind of like. A uh, mixologist, like a like um, makes drinks and all that. So, um, but in terms of status, we know in the before how like Natasha, a four star um, um, doctor character. Um, she mm-hmm. uh, later it's re- later on it's revealed that she is the leader of Wildfire, not not that old guy Oleg. Oleg so like so like this could be also be the same where where it he could just be a simple bartender mixologist thing but maybe he's also in charge it could be the same thing maybe. yeah there's a high chance as well we could get a companion mission about this character as well because we know they tend to make companion missions for the five stars mm-hmm. and even the four stars so so i'm hoping that a uh, of us do kind of pick up um on his character because he does look like a mysterious one but he looks a lot more kind of approachable and friendly he kind of reminds me in a way of like Deluc and kaya mm-hmm. from uh, genshin being that obviously he kind of has like the rough outlook of Deluc, but he's probably got like the personality of kaya oh yeah, so yeah. he's quite approachable and friendly maybe even a little bit flirtatious yeah but um, i'm not too sure with this one and what's up with this um match thing here like L- uh, yeah lighter so he could I be think- ah sorry yeah <laughs> i think i'm thinking he's probably um i'm thinking he probably potentially smoke most likely <laughs> so um but he also could be maybe a link in for drinks because i know with some very high-end cocktail makers they actually use uh fire for presentation of the drinks that is so true. that could also link into it that's true, yeah, that that's that is definitely true. Yeah. Oh wait. Uh, so I've just gone back on Honkai Star Rail's um Twitter slash X, whatever we call it. I still call it Twitter. He's actually a security officer. He is? Oh. Yeah, it says he's a security officer you know, of the Bloodhound family. You know, now that I think but about it, is... look at this. Look at this. The um this well, part how here. Not pick up on that. I know. Well, <laughs> Well, um, but, you know, now that Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, now that you said that, now, I could now see how he is somewhat, like, simpler version of Risley from Genshin. Like, he had the same shape, he has the freaking tie, and, and then I see, I, we, I, I can't believe we didn't see the badge thing. I was wondering. I just thought it was a part of the decoration of the jacket, man. Same That's what here. They tend to do with it. Same here. I I thought so too. So I'm so our bad. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it does say as well on the Twitter that he appears to or seems to be a character with a complicated past, yet never actively mentions any details. Hmm. So, he's... so that would also suggest the whole mysterious back path, um, like past thing. So again, I'm guessing very Deluc slash Kaya background here. He, hopefully, I'm hoping we'll have a companion, companion quest with this guy, so that way, so that way, um, less mysterious to us and all that. Now we're gonna go to your favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so. Not in. <laughs> So this one, um, you know that the environment, the Pentacony has some like whales and all that stuff. Um, so her, so I like that she has like different fishes, not, not different fishes. Like they, these fish are not whales around, um, are not whales, so they're definitely fishes that belong to her. She is Harmony, yeah. right? So, like, so, um, Correct. I so like that. According... I, what do you think? Sorry, you, you know more. Yeah, so <laughs> she's going to be, surprisingly, 
even though she's got like the red aesthetic, she's got the icon of quantum. Oh, that's a really good screenshot. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so she's supposed to be a quantum five star character on Harmony. The thing that obviously we'll cover this a little bit more in my video as well, but the thing that also made me makes me really want to pull for her. Um her her ability allows you to get an extra two skill points on top of the five you already get. Yeah, I noticed that. Which yeah. is gonna make her an absolute game changer for any sort of uh team that relies on skill points like, you know, King uh Jinja in Barbara Talune, you know, those types of characters are basically going to get a lot more enabled especially, if you have Sparkle on your team. Especially in Barbara Lune, like... When oh, God, yeah, skill... you can easily use up all your skill points with that guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love Sparkle's design, and, you know, she's all about fun as well, so that also gives me a lot of intriguing... Yeah, I mean, uh, the way she walks, the way she was walking in this scene already, like... It's like she's all she's already like having some fun here, so yeah, yeah. What, what she might be another fun one, but probably in a good way. Like she will, she will probably make the story pretty fun, and she's the fun type. Um, unlike adventuring, she probably might be a good one. Probably, maybe mischievous. I, would... I don't know. I can see her going both sides. Like, I can see her kind of sticking around the Trailblazer because they're interesting and fun and different. But I can also see her going on the other side and being, say, allied with the Stellaron Hunters at the same time because mm -hmm. she, you know, she just wants to have fun. That's all she literally is. She's going to be released on the second phase of 2.0 as well, so that, which is expected to be February 29th. Oh, okay. Approximately. So I would not be surprised if she's not, like, in the story initially. I feel like she's someone we'll bump into later, or Light Tinyun is going to be very, very uh, different. So, yeah, I, can, I definitely agree with that. She could go either way as long as she has some fun. I could see that. All right. All right. And then there's Bobby. her. She's so pretty. So amazing. Gorgeous. I... What I think she I don't know um I I'm kind of thinking because she's always in the like secluded area like like she I never seen her really interacting with anybody yet she's like always in some kind of like um one place and right and mm -hmm. in this part here she's it's 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 just her too. So I'm just, I don't know much, um, but I'm just wondering like if, uh, if only the trailblazer might see her, might, might be the only one that can talk to her or if everyone can see her or, and all that. I'm, she's, she's another mystery. She's basically a mystery mommy, basically. Oh, absolutely. Well, we do know that she's going to be a five-star wind character, which really surprised me, because I genuinely thought when I first saw her kit and her design, like, from the leaks, I thought she was going to be a quantum character. I thought so, too. But no, she's actually a wind character, which is also very surprising, and she's going to be a nihility character. That nihility, I could see, but the, but the wind, I, I, I don't know. So, what do you think of her with, um, in terms of story? So, like, what do you think could be her? Like, um, how would she be an impact to the Pentaconi story? Because for me, I honestly have no idea. Like, aside from maybe she might be helpful to the Trailblazer, maybe, and and all that. I can't, I, I don't know. She's definitely a mystery to me. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that we basically know is that she's a memo keeper working for the Garden of Recollection, which, mm -hmm. as we all know, works a lot very close to um, the Eon of Remembrance fully. Oh, yeah. Um, she seems to be kind of like Elio in that regard, who obviously, as we know, can predicts what happens in the future oh, and the other yeah. Stellaron Hunters will run by the script. So, I'm, you know what, here's a really good example. For those of you who've played Baldur's Gate 3, you know the Guardian? yeah. I'm getting that kind of vibe from her. Like, she's guiding us towards it. Because she obviously is working for the Garden of Recollection. So, like, you know, like kind of like pres preserving memories and stuff like that. That is true, yeah. 
Because that's the whole point of the uh, Forgotten Hall, which is like our main uh, source of getting uh, stellar jades outside of, you know, weekly simulated universes and things like that. Mm-hmm. That that does give me the same vibe. I I agree with you for sure. Hmm. I think, I, I don't know, I kind of feel like she's going to be kind of against the stellar on Hunters in this case. Again, we could be completely wrong, but I'm getting the vibe that she'll be kind of against the stellar on Hunters, and she may be trying to, like guide them towards the right path kind of similar to what elio was trying to do like when they made us go on to the zienjo was so we could ally with the law foo Mm because at some point we're gonna have to fight the nook which that is going to not be a fun fight for me i know (laughs) no i'm I'm dreading it already but like genuinely i still have no idea but if i had to make a guess i would have to say that she's probably going to be like kind of like a very uh mommy sort of character being she's guiding the trailblazer like they're her su- her child sort of thing that's true yeah maybe like like, like uh, she's into like cards thing um we thinking that she what are what what do we know with her the cards and all that what what do I, we know it's i think it's kind of like tarot cards so like with tarot you can some um, you know can kind of look into the future and stuff like that i wonder if she will she will like pull a card that will show something devastating in a way that oh, i Christ, know can you imagine <laughs> oh, oh that's gonna be something and look at this i i i paused this very nicely we saw her beauty in this so crazy and plus, let's not forget, she was actually the character who was used during, like, the teaser during the Game Awards as well. They used this character to tease 2.0. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, to me, that would also suggest that she's got a good, pl- a, like, a very big influence in the story. Because why would Toyoverse use this particular character to, you know, tease about a new region and everything if she wasn't going to be a big character? That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be true. And she's five star. So yeah, oh, stunning. So this one, this one kind, this scene kind of went a little bit quick on me. Um, mm. the that one. Okay, so that part. All right. So this one went so quick that I couldn't even see what's going on. So like, that looks like some kind of claw. Um. What mm-hmm. what do we know of this one here? It would it is it that one if you you seen the live stream? It, um, is it that mm-hmm. probably that one dragon looking boss that yeah. we see? Is that probably this one here? Nine times out of ten, like going off of the look of it, it definitely looks like a claw, which would suggest there's something onto Death Ball, mm-hmm. um, which is an upcoming boss in two point um, we don't, we know it's going to be in Panacony. We don't know what its weaknesses or its resistances are going to be, but uh, like, there's so little information about this particular character, but we do know that he has the potential ability to one shot a character. If you don't break the thing in time, you know how like with Svarog, he grabs a character and puts him in like a cage yeah. until you destroy the claw and it releases the character. Mm-hmm. If you don't free the character by the time that the weakness is down, um, that character is instantly dead. Oh my gosh. So he's going to be a very difficult boss, I, I think. Like, I think we're going to. I've always said to any Honkai Star Rail player that I've spoken to about their account that I would always recommend having one character minimum leveled for each element. This is a definitely one of those cases. Yeah. It. Yeah, and the way this scene played out, so quick. Oh, oh, I just noticed that. Um, kind of like... Yeah, that's the eye. That's the eye, yeah. That's crazy. That's got to be the something on the death boss, then. Yeah, oh my gosh. It it, it, it was so instant Oogie. and so fast, and and it it's scary, but like, but like, you know this vibe, if you look at it, since we are analyzing it more, it's so evil in a way it's it's quick but you can get the vibe that it was going to be evil in some yeah way, so i think from may is actually going to be amazing against this boss because of her double break um ability yeah so i'm gonna have to build my ron may okay um, i didn't get her <laughs> oh. okay i'm gonna put this music 
part on because I'm gonna show because the next scene I'm I might be a little bit more passionate about this part. Of course. Okay. So so the so the music is like all groovy here. Yep. Here. Okay. So that so that part I'm gonna be a little bit more passionate about. Um so you see that the 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 vibe the music kind of changed the vibe. I know I'm looking more too deeply into it, but that's that's the point of the analysis. Um, it, the music got all soft when it went to her, and mm -hmm. and and she looks precious, by the way. Um, oh, she looks adorable. She looks so precious, especially when she, and she's like dancing out in bright sky and look Bucklers. at and look at Kalis. um look at um look at this guy, the male trailblazer that speaks like adoration uh possible possible romance in a way his face looks soft to me um when he's yeah. like looking at the girl there so possible romance or even just a hint of a romance i, I don't know but yeah to me i'm also getting kind of like a um sibling potentially vibe like you know when you get so attached to somebody that it's basically like sister or brother from another mother sort of thing that could be it too. i'm getting that vibe as well because we have to remember obviously it's going to be for both genders obviously i'm not saying that you know bisexuality and stuff like that couldn't come into play here but i look at that and i kind of see that as a you're just kind of happy to see this other person happy like yeah. because you, you're that close to them that would which also would suggest that character before is probably going to be a very big part of the story because you wouldn't just look at somebody like that for no reason no uh, i will also want i want to point out genshin had shown a little difference with um the bond between the um the bond with one npc with um with the traveler there is a difference between the two so like so there is um i didn't do this world quest but um but i've seen clips of it there in the sand place there is this one npc called jet and apparently she's like either neutral or um or what do you call this aggressive a little bit when she talks mm. to the male tra traveler but when you if you are playing the female traveler she gets the way she talks in the same scene as the as as what I talked about with the male trail traveler, but the difference mm -hmm. is that she talked blushing to the female traveler. So there mm. have been hints so that that this character Jet J E H T um, is not much into the male traveler, but she's more into the female traveler. So yeah, if if this one. If there might be whatever close bond, whatever close bond, there. Regardless, we we can tell that Trailblazer and the girl is and this um this girl will probably be close in some way. But if there is any chance that it, that they might do what they did with Jet um in Genshin, where where there will there, the personality will be different depending on the gender. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a chance that if you play as male trailblazer, there might be some hints of romance. Or if you play and if you play as the female tra uh, trailblazer, there might be some really close sibling. Or it could be that there can be that that it can be solely um romance ish or or it can be solely sibling ish but regardless based on this scene we can i i believe that 
there will definitely be some kind of close bond with them. But even though, even though it shows a little soft-ish close bond, I hate to say this, there's going to be a sad moment with this girl. Absolutely. Yeah, you do not make an overly happy character like that and not make, do that. I mean, yeah. come on. March is a walking red flag for that. Mhm. Mm yeah, and this girl is also a walking red flag. Like the the um her what is it? Um the fact that we see the trailblazer having a soft look after looking at um the the girl and the, that and the then music, taking a picture. Yeah, and the music get all very soft and all that. There's go. It's Honkai. It's, there, def there might be some kind of sad <laughs> moment. <laughs> I like how our answer to everything is now. Oh, it's just Honkai. Like we we don't know what they're gonna do. You um, gir girl, you gotta play Honkai Impact soon because I'm you'll, going you'll to. See, you will see. You'll see what I'm. What we mean. I will cry. Guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> So what, Another thing as well yeah. that I just noticed, if you look at the background of the Trailblazer, it kind of looks like that they're kind of like on a tour, so that could suggest again that this character is someone we meet very, very early in the in the story. Because um, I mentioned it's kind of like a Las Vegas vibe, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the anime now that I watched, but there was an anime that I watched a very long time ago <laughs> about this girl who basically couldn't really go outside because she had like really like a really strict family mm -hmm. and she was like loyalty. But this guy meets her, doesn't know who she is, treats her like an everyday person, shows her around the city, and you know, he is at first very, oh, you know, whatever. And then he grows to then he grows to have feelings for her. So mm -hmm. and the girl is obviously like all like experience in life. I'm getting that sort of vibe from this as well. If anyone remembers that anime, by the way, let me know. Yeah, th I think that that is true too. And di didn't we say, didn't we hear that this Penacani will be all about dreams too? It, because, mm -hmm. because if it does that, well, you know what? I was almost thinking that this girl could just be part of a dream, but the re the other scenes with her in it um, kind of disproves that to me because she seems much more involved to be in to be just a dream to me so like this part we'll s we'll see that this one might be a dream dream thing to me mm -hmm. there's multiple of the trailblazer and he looks up and then there's like a this is beautiful by the way like there's a, yeah, like a falling star and it's her it's her that's she's basically like a falling star so yeah it's... Another thing I have thought of just well, I didn't actually think of this when I was like writing up some notes for the analysis later on. Mm -hmm. Do you remember back in Samaru with Nahida, we got stuck in a dream and we were repeating the same day at the Samsaros festivals? Mm -hmm. What if we got like a similar concept here? Hmm. Like as in, you know, because obviously it's all dreams, you know, that kind of things could link up. It maybe. Could be. Probably a bit of a longer shot. But I definitely agree with, like, the falling star thing. Another thing I've noticed with her, you know how the Archons in Genshin have um, cut hair that light up their, like, kind of element color uh -huh. when they use their ultimate? Yeah. She's got darker green on the tip of her hair. Oh, yeah, this one right here? And she's got a very big green aesthetic. Mm-hmm. I see, like, So a little... that could also suggest something. This but this part here kind of has like a little Al Haysom design right over here. I see. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this girl definitely she she's she might be a major important thing because um because in this video she appears three times. Um, the other characters appears either once or twice, besides the trailblazer, of course. But um, yeah, but the other characters appears once or twice. This one appears three times. There, she appears in the end, which we'll get to. But um, mm -hmm. but it's it's like barely. You have to see it. You have to barely see it. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, she's gonna. She might be a really important 
role to the trailblazer. Maybe close bond. Uh, probably definitely. I I'm definitely thinking that she might be an ally. Or wait, actually, I'm I scratch that. She she. I would say she's an ally. But there is another thing that I want to discuss. But we're gonna get into that um, when we get to that scene. Um, but she she would be like. Her, this one herself, she would probably be a big ally. Anything else you yeah, want to say? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, other than the fact that, again, I just don't think they've like let down with any of the character designs. Out of all of them, she's probably one of the ones I'm the most mysterious about and the most eager to know about. Mm -hmm. Because, as you said, she does appear so many times. Um, you know, she could literally be anything at this point. Mm-hmm. So and kind of a bit. Hmm. And she's who are you exactly? Precious. She looks so precious. So I, oh, I yeah, definitely want. I, w I definitely want to get to know her. I'm gonna just take a gut a gut here, and say that it's probably potentially a four star. Now the only reason I say that is because you know we had G Gallagher and Misha at the beginning. They were four stars, so we know that they're not afraid to show four stars off in this as well. And think about it, Tin Yoon was leading us through all of Cien Jo, so with as much screen time as she got, you'd think she'd be a four, a five star, but she's not. Mm -hmm. So it could be a similar concept here. Yeah, and, and, okay, so this is the one thing I like about Honkai Star Rail. They're giving more, a lot of love to even the four star, so I'm, mm -hmm. so it's kind, and then, if I had to be honest, Honkai Star Rail is, the one game where I am totally okay with ju with some of the four star because they're I don't know it's it's the four, um five star I I like both of them um the the other the the Genshin I I like some the I like the characters but the I don't play styles I, meh meh with the four star one and I guess I just got bored with the ultimate two at the same time so I don't know. But yeah, I think I I I would think that she might be a four star as well. But yeah. there but well but there is one scene that I want to talk about. Um we'll get to that pretty pretty soon if I don't mistaken. Mm. And then so th there there is adventuring still being all nice and um dancey but I just realized he he's wearing some kind of like cloth thingy on his fingers too. Um yeah. And then look at that. This That's definitely stunning. It's really stunning and evil-ish in a way, like um like yeah. shadow-ish but some like glowing eye and all that. So all he's all like cool and smiling and then there's and then this one is like dark, but but with but um, enlightened eye and a little bit of a smirk. So we could be right with with him being a little bit evilish in a way, probably. Yeah. This scene in particular is what gave me that impression. Like I I try not to judge characters by their appearance, but one not only does he look shady. This definitely is, like, sussy behavior here. Like, you know, the inner, like, the iris of his eye is glowing. You know, he's got the glowing earrings. Some some outfits of his body seem to be illuminating up as well. So that is giving me a very, like, potential evil nostalgia. Obviously, we'll get into this later in the video as well. But we also know that we're actually meeting another Stellaron Hunter as well. Mm -hmm. The last one. So that's going to potentially link into this as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, agree. Agree. All right. So here, here it's like super quick scenes, but like the um, it shows the environment and all that. This, these are definitely enemies. That's for sure. It's that. It's like those frogs in Shenzo. Shenzo. Um. Yeah. Those frog things. Um, yeah, they're annoying to fight against. I hate them. Oh, okay. So, uh, the, hat. the hat. Yeah. So we know that Penacani is some kind of is a planet of harmony. 
So, Mm -hmm. you know how in the beginning, I forgot to mention that, in the beginning where um, Trailblazer is also wearing the hat as well? Yeah, when he's dancing. I think that's the Harmony Trailblazer to me. I I would not be surprised. That's pretty cool. A freaking hat. Oh my god, if he gets a hat and he gets to tip it, that is going to be legendary. Yeah. Just imagine him tipping the fedora being like, my lady. (laughs) <laughs> I know. He even looks like he's already <laughs> tipping. <laughs> and proper, then, goes proper British for a minute there. <laughs> all good. Uh, I can we can barely see it. I it will show later, but this is definitely an, another enemy. That those enemies was creepy. Like like it'll it'll change face and all that. Ah, there, yeah. Oh, what the heck? I didn't. So there's the whales. Here's the whales. So we like the whales. We like the whales. Mm-hmm. And gumball machines. Are yeah, you... very arcade esque. Huh. This one. This is one enemy that they didn't. Def- I don't think they have discussed in the live stream. I I'm surprised on that. Ah. It... Yeah, I mean, it might potentially be an enemy, or it might have just been, like, maybe for the sake of the music video. That's the thing, because we have heard next to nothing about Panacolni. We don't know, really, what's going to be an enemy, what's not. So, I think that's kind of cool, though. Let's, Keep some of the mystery in. Yeah, let us for- let's let us not forget that they'll not introduce the enemy until maybe when they're when it's about they're about to appear in the other version so maybe they might be shown in 2.1 i'm not sure yeah and then there's the whales all the whales the The whales it's uh, i when i i know like when people say there's not much like exploration um um gameplay in in Honkai Star Rail. I I um this the Pentaconi kind of makes me start to dis- disagree on it because I agree. like because like maybe in the what is it? The Bellabog and the Herta station. Yeah, sure. We can't jump. Sh- yeah, sure. That one I'm that one definitely could be something, but like but like Penacani has a really scenic stuff, and apparently I don't know, I don't know too much of it, but but there is some places where we could even walk up the walls too. So that's like yeah, I've seen that. That was like oh gosh, they have really stepped up their exploration um game game with this one. I mean. Like, plus the fact the whales not only look stunning, but they're also a reference to one of our favorite characters, which I'm pretty sure is one of the main reasons me and you actually bonded in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> belo- beloved, belo- beloved Tornellini, as I call him. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, it's just stunning. Like, can you imagine looking up in the game and seeing the whales flying above you? Like, the kind of like, um, if you look to the side on the, um, in the Zienjo, uh, Scalegord Waterscape. Mm-hmm. You see, like, the whales, like, swimming in the water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Visually, that's going to look stunning, especially yeah. if they get the lighting right. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I forgot that Gien- Gienzo has some, like, nice look of- on this. But Pentaconi, well, so far, so far, definitely tops off the exploration stuff. Oh, oh. The, um... Definitely some of these little gambling thing, and oh, here's the one. This, this, um, this yeah. enemy that will like change looks and all that. Oh my gosh, I yeah, we can look up, right? So, so I I'm I'm excited to like look up to see the whale above us. It's that many wallpaper a... opportunities for wallpaper engine coming yeah, in here. I think I might use a bunch of camera moment in the game yes Ooh, there's some like um that one like i don't know that's a clock and here is this one shocked me freaking mecha dinosaur for me it looks like a mecha t-rex some mecha dinosaurs in here oh wait wait i just realized that that's that's cool like all the enemies are kind of walking, walking up to the viewers here. The, 
the monkey, mm-hmm. the um, it's a sweet gorilla, yeah, gorilla, yeah, the um, T Rex, the big clock dude, and this, this, I think some kind of shield guy, or just like simply like a big chest plate guy, and then the the face, the one the TV guy here, um, they're like walking up to us, and then there's still the 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 whale wait, wait wait hold on hold on i just i just noticed something What's that? that's that was dun hung right here i just noticed yeah. that so like yep. so so dun hung will be very mesmerized probably or anyone anyone will be mesmerized with the whales and all that this one here yeah. oh wait you have something oh, to say oh poor himiko Walking red red flag. This part is a red flag to me. Like so, yeah. um, you see the environment. The it's like in a dream kind of a thing where mm-hmm. uh, all the chairs and the table, the chairs are floating all around. The tables are like some of them are kind of curved up, and. Um, they're all floating, and she's floating too. Like, like yeah. That's... Which I, I hate to say it. This is like a death flag for a character. Which, if this is the case, I am really, really, really scared for Himiko because this is the first time she's accompanying us on a region as well by choice. Because the... you know she joined us during her to space station when obviously we had to fight against the um you know the doomsday beast. Mm-hmm. But she's been kind of on the down low since for two regions now. Have, that scares me. Have you heard of something with her in in um, Honkai Impact? I have heard that she does die, but I don't know how. Okay, okay. So you do know that's her. That's one of the reasons I think she's... I think that's one of the reasons I'm also scared, because we know now by this point that Hoyaverse are not afraid to kill off characters, especially in the Honkai franchise. Yeah. And if they do ki- kill off Himiko, one is going to be kind of expected... But mm-hmm. I think it's going to be dependent on how they pull it off, if that's the route they decide to go down to. Exactly. Like, I genuinely thought they were going to kill Don Hong before he changed into a Bible Lune. Yeah, I, which, by the way, that's crazy that he got stabbed that one time. Um, but... uh, yeah, like, God damn it, Blade, you had one job, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so... Okay, I didn't have much to say with the Don Hong one, but except that he'll be all mesmerized with the whale um thing um himiko yeah he she could be trapped in the dream maybe i don't know too much about how the dream thing will go i know like freaking live streams were saying how it's going to be fun gonna be safe in the dream or something or but um yeah himiko looks like she could be trapped in the some kind of dream space or something or and I'm yeah. really hoping it's I'm really hoping we'll be able to save her I don't know but it's My, it, it's a scary thing uh, I think another thing now that I'm actually looking at this I just remembered isn't Pentacolony supposed to be like an uh, planet that was used to imprison um you know, criminals, but after a Stellaron burst, um, Shipe, the Harmony, took over. Mmm, yeah. So that could potentially link into it? That could be. That could be, huh. I wonder if they're going to do anything with March, because March is, but even though March has been with us, you know, a lot these past couple of regions, like, you know, she's been there for every adventure. She's so upbeat and happy, which is a good time for her to come up. Exactly. So, you know, you can, like, she's massive and she's kind of transparent, mm -hmm. which to me could suggest that, you know, she's kind of dreaming herself. Could Like, is the whole party going go into Panacolli? Is Welt going to sit back on this one? We don't even know who's accompanying us with Panacolli. The only person we know is obviously Trailblazer and Himiko. Those are the only two characters we know. Here's another thing. Here's Welt right over here. So yeah, you... I didn't notice, but yeah, you could be right with her being um, being transparent and Mm. because Welt looks more solid over here. Um... I don't know. Um, the 
uh, how I don't know if this is all symbolic or if it's actually gonna happen. How how is why is um, March so big on here and wealth so tiny? Um, some of the this is definitely a dream space. I'll say that because some of the buildings are all um, like, toppled down in a way. So yeah, and and why is um. I don't know if maybe March is seeing the same thing because why is she taking pictures? Maybe she's taking a picture because she's she's apparently bigger than the building. Maybe I don't know. I'm it, but but this is definitely yeah. a dream thing. Definitely. What do you think? What what do you think of like what what this could what this could mean? Do you know? Honestly, this is like again. I could be reaching uh, on a stretch here. This also, to me, would flag a potential death flag with March for two reasons. Mostly, one, if I was in Hoyaverse, I would know by now that my community is expecting Himiko to be killed. So why not chain like plot twist, kill off somebody else, especially mm. one who's been with us this long. Right? She is too happy. That's another thing. And we know what happens to happy characters in games, <laughs> Rue. We know what happens to the happy ones. That's I why know, we be miserable all the, the time. But the thing is, we don't know her past. So we... So, exactly. So I'm hoping it's March's, not crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, have you played March's companion quest with uh, yeah, Fush yeah. Fushan? Yeah, that yeah, one. So, even fully is not letting her remember it. I know exactly. That's red that's, flag. That's what I, I I'm you'll you if you watch the video you might see you you might you'll know that in this part I'm I'm going like erg with that because that that um that companion thing got got me err because like oh yeah we <laughs> ended like we ended like that and March still didn't get what she wants to get like. Er, I want to know more. Like, what? she's such a mysterious character for a four star, and obviously, like Dong Hong was also mysterious, and he turned into a five star technically. So, I'm also thinking they could potentially do something similar with March here as well. You know, okay. like they could have something happen to her where, say, for, say, for, so for example, we know that she used six phase ice, which is obviously a rare sub substance. Mm -hmm. Imagine if she ended up having a form kind of like Cocolia. Where she's like a lot more powerful, mm. and that could be a five star. And maybe the dream could be her trying to dream and remember her past. It could be. Wait, yeah, maybe. May, may, yeah, you're right. Maybe she might. I'm just throwing theories. No, 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 no. Just a game no, theory. No, no, no. The, I, the one, the one I, that I could probably agree with you is that since maybe she might remember some stuff. In Pentaconi through dream stuff, maybe. If I if I'm right, I owe you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just 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 record that. <laughs> yeah, I'll just PayPal you the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Oh oh, uh, the, and th this is the one character that uh, that I said would appear two times in the thing. Mm -hmm. So three times. That's definitely her weapon and all that. Um, oh, her catalyst looks bloody gorgeous. I know, yeah. It, it there's definitely gonna be some kind. She's she's definitely gonna be major in some way. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that little like her weapon, her weapons right there, and then bam, the, kind of like the explosion, and then there's. There's this one here. Okay, here is the one that I want to talk about. So, Stellaron Hunter, let's go. Yeah, yeah, Stellaron Hunter. That I I remember that um the live stream said that the uh, um some the Stellaron Hunter will also have their fun, and I was all like, I didn't see a Stellaron Hunter in the in the video, but then because I was only thinking Blade. Kafka and and um, Silver War, but yeah, but then it clicked to me. Oh, it's Sam. But here's something that caught me. Let's play this part. Let's play this part. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Here we go. Look at the color of the wings. 
Beautiful. Yeah. But I could this could be a stretch. I think Sam mm-hmm. is a girl. I would argue Sam is probably a girl as well. I am 95% certain that Sam's going to be a girl. And I'm going to say, based on the color, it might be the precious girl. That's a good theory, to be honest. I genuinely would not be surprised. Because... If that is, well, I say I wouldn't be surprised. I would be... Uh, it wouldn't be like a, oh my effing god sort of moment. Not like, for example... You know, when uh, Dong Han turned into a Bible to Lune because, like, I'm looking at this, right? Mm-hmm. First off, obviously, you can see the lightning in the distance there. Obviously, we know who Sam's fighting here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, we'll which there. also, Mommy Contender. She's also another character we're going to have to cover in a minute because mm-hmm. she is bloody hot. I want, but, I um, actually want her um, for the next one. And yeah. I- I'm kind yeah. of hoping Gallagher is going to be in the same one, but continue. Yeah, like, I'm looking at this. Um, I feel like Hollyverse could also be toying with us and trying to lead us to that conclusion. Um, but I do agree that there is a very high chance that Sam could be that happy girl, especially, you know, because... And this is where my theory of Sparkle potentially working with the Stellaron Hunters could come into play because, um, you know fun mm-hmm. so i'm honestly not surprised that you've come up to that conclusion i have to say i i have a very good suspicion as well yeah and hopefully um hopefully that'd be the case because that would just make her a must pull at that point because we know the stellar on hunters sell well you not know, just because of their tits not only the <laughs> um, not so we know too based on um Based on Dun Hung, that he will have a four star form and a five star mm-hmm. form. What I think is correct that Sam is um is the precious girl and all that. One of them is going to be a five star, while the other one might be a four star, maybe. So maybe Sam might be a five star. I don't know. I can't. Uh, that's 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 another thing that's running into my mind right now. Yeah, there's the other thing that also we could bring up here. Um, so far, all the Celeron Hunters have been five stars. So you've got Kafka, you've got Blade, and you've got Silverwolf, who are all currently playable five-star characters in the game. Mm-hmm. We have Elio. I am 99.99% certain that Elio is going to end up being a five-star as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if they're going to make all the Celeron Hunters five stars, depending on how much they make an impact in the story. True. Yeah. So it could be the case. Or maybe, for instance, like, you know, that is like her kind of, you know, how like Child, for instance, he's got his like delusion form, foul legacy, and then he's got like his normal form. It could also be a similar concept to that. Could be. Um, We are not super sure. This could definitely be a different person. And all that. It's just that the wings, the color of the wings uh, got to me. So, um, yeah, it's a good point to bring up because I don't think everybody would pick up on that. Yeah. And like that. And look at how cool she is. So, so it, so Sam and Acheron, I'm going to pronounce it that way or Acheron. Um, Acheron. That sounds sounds better. Um, that sounds better. Yeah. The they have some kind of maybe they might have some kind of rivalry or maybe because we know um, it. We know that Acheron is um, based on that video, the the in the awards one. She visited um Penacani. So she's not from Penacani. Um No, I got very Raiden Shogun vibes from her and I'm pretty sure most people said that when they first saw her. Yeah. Probably because of the purple eye, purple hair and the katana. But and- one thing I will say about her, she is one fucking stunning, as <laughs> always. I'm pre- you know what her universe is like with her um characters. I'm pretty sure it said something about her on uh the Twitter page. So I'm just gonna get that up real quick. Um, obviously, if you want to say your point. She's, um, you know how, Uh, like, Honkai Impact 3rd, 
there's already Sila and um, Bronya having like their own version in Honkai Impact Surge, and they're like mm-hmm. a little more grown up here. This one might be almost the same thing. So there is a character in Honkai Impact Surge uh, named Raiden May. So she's mm-hmm. purple hair. She also goes. She also used a sword too. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the Star Rail um, alternate version of um, Honkai of the Honkai Impact Third. Um, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. I would think so. Here we go. Uh, a drifter claiming to be a Galaxy Ranger. Her true name is unknown, and she walks the cosmos alone, carrying with her a long sword. Though aloof. Um, and some word I can't pronounce. Her her blade flicks out like lashing lightning, and yet she always strikes with her uh, scabbard, never drawing the sword free. Mm-hmm. So she actually never takes the sword out of the sheath. Oh, oh, so, so, hmm, so she, she's different with Sam. So, what kind of, what kind of? thing um will those two have it's either rivalry or acheron have something against them or or had been targeting them or something or i mean a galaxy ranger to me i'm guessing very guardians of the galaxy vibe which could be for instance she's trying to protect the galaxy Maybe and don't let's not forget Stellaron Hunter. They are wanted, so maybe yeah, they she's are on the tracking, wanted list. She is tracking the um, Stellaron Hunter, and she happens to find Sam first, probably. So maybe yeah, maybe that you know, with a suit like that, you're gonna stand out. You know what I mean? Yeah, that too. Um, mm. Hold on, let me look more into it. And we see that she was so freaking strong with that little slash thing. And yeah. and it almost oh I, I I just realized that Acheron's also here but um yeah. but man man Sam is in a little bit of a pickle because that little static on the on the little machine thing he's all staticked up so um yeah and obviously static and wings are not a good combo yeah so that's I'm a little scared for that. Mm. Um, I've got another thing to mention while we're actually on this topic. Yeah. How do you think the Annihilation Gang is going to link to the Star Star on Hunters or in the story? Because, like, we saw the teaser for them. Like, we've seen the characters. Mm-hmm. You know, we both got scared as crap by the mannequin girl, the puppet girl. Oh, you, 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 you got scared at the same time? To, you- I literally was just like this. That is some fucking puppet shit. <laughs> 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 oh, God, like, I don't, like... Do the tin you think anything that makes any sort of cracking noise triggers me. I know, yeah. Um, and and me, it's just more because it's it was a freaking child, so like that, so that creeps You're just me like, out. Yeah, and, no, that's a child. And then the puppet, <laughs> and then the puppet thing made it even worse for me. So that was creepy. But yeah, yeah we don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Which one of the the Annihilation Gang was a sign for um, harmony? Do you remember? Cause the cause the um, fa- sign for harmony. the Duke was like telling all the passing to each one of them. So like the guy, the first one is definitely um, destruction because I remember the or that that one I remember it, it was mentioned first. Elation is. The creepy child because um because I made that clip and I listened to it a, a couple of times. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously you got the guy who has the cello. I think his name is Akash. He was obviously the tuner, and he mentioned the path of destruction. See, so that suggests destruction character. Um, maybe because obviously you got Katarina who is the redhead. With the massive tits that are definitely going to get nerfed before she gets on life. Uh, trying to think. Uh, so you got Katarina. Obviously, it could be Constant. Constance. Constance was mentioned last and kind of 
put she's a kind of the bit bigger figure yeah i feel like like because when duke was talking to all of them he was talking to them as if they were subjects right like kind of like apprentices mm -hmm. and he even said Constance, there's nothing more that I can teach you, which to me suggests if we did fight every single one of the Annihilation gang members, I feel like she would be like the second to last before Duke Inferno. Because yeah. technically we've already faced him already. Technically, yeah. Hmm. So I feel like she's going to be the strongest one out of the, uh, you know, the members taking out Duke Inferno. Yeah. And plus, plus the fact, you know, she says a little pessimism might be wise. What if we all end up dead? So hmm. that kind of suggests she's kind of like the mother figure in there. You know, she's kind of keeping the ones under control. Katarina kind of comes across to me as like that rebellious teenager who wants to just annihilate everything along with a cash. Mm -hmm. And then the little girl, um, I think her name is Deborah, the scribe. She just goes, I shall fo follow your decree, father. So to me, that suggests that she's basically willing to do whatever Duke Inferno tells her to. Technically, it's not the child. It's that little freaking reaper thing It's the thing curtain behind. thing but that still, I say I'm, the I'm child. Just, I'm going to say the child because that's that's what the thing, that's what yeah. stand me out. I feel like that's how we would like first be introduced to her as in her child form. I don't think they're going to go fall in with the curtain. Yeah. I know she's not a curtain, but that's what I call her. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah... I, I actually had that in mind too. Like, um, the the annihilation. We got peace on the annihilation gang, but they aren't. Um, they aren't in this video, so it really makes me wonder where they would be in this um, mm. in the story if they they will. Which they does tease us. And the, the um what do you call that um the annihilation gang right before they showed some pentaconi stuff so mm. so surely at least one of them might be there i'm gonna make a prediction and say that all of them are gonna be at pentaconi and that we're at least gonna get some sort of introduction to them even if it's not directly with the trailblazer mm -hmm. like for example you know when we were in a uh, urelo six and we went to sleep and we saw a clip of the Stellaron interacting with Kokolia when she thought that Bronya had died. Mm, right? Or she yeah. went missing. Yeah. We got like a little snippet of what was going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if that ends up being the case with at least some of the members of the Annihilation gang as well. Could be. Because it says the current... Because on like when they announced the Annihilation gang, you know, when they put the picture of all four characters... Like, sorry, not four, five characters in there... It says the curtains will soon rise on the family's banquet and the golden blood of destruction will run all the same. Mm -hmm. Enjoy this woven dream of beauty for the Everflame Mansion will offer all, all to them. Emphasizing the, the them. Hmm. Okay. So okay. I'm just like, oh! Sam, we're gonna fight Sam. I just remembered that. Yes, like, correct. The live streams. And... And a big one too like so this is definitely some it's a gun fire gun thing. on the ground for christ's sake yeah so like so um so i don't know that's why that's why uh that theory thing that that could be the precious girl um could be wrong too but um but at the same time freaking sam was like a little bit of a gundam thing so like um mm. so like he's bigger than all the characters so definitely there might be someone inside that um yeah but it makes so yeah it definitely i, I it just dawned on me he's the sam is a Stellaron hunter so so surely we will have some kind of boss fight in some way so hmm if my theory yeah i just was, wonder what the yeah. situation's gonna be where we start fighting them yeah same here and what and if the theory is correct how is it that uh, we got turned on or maybe we didn't know the identity we don't we won't know the identity and we just simply meet sam themselves um yeah boy or girl i don't know we might meet them themselves first so like so, like, they will be hostile towards us. So, we don't know. Yeah. And we don't know the true nature. 
Everyone's hostile when we first come to the bloody country. Like the, I said, country. We we always get hostility when we go to a new planet. March has made that joke on multiple occasions, so mm -hmm. it's very likely going to be the similar case. Exactly. Okay. Um. There's this one. Um. I don't know if this links towards that. There's this video where there's a, a trash. Um. I've seen pictures though, but I never seen the video yet. I might make a reaction on it, but but yeah, do it. The that's also suggesting dreamscape. Yeah, this one with the freaking like the trash lord. Wait, and then the shampoo. I didn't even clock that was Sampo. What the hell? You didn't know? Yeah, so... I didn't clock that was Sampo. Right, okay. Uh, so well, you were you were more focused on Trashy. I was literally more focused on Trashy, because obviously I didn't get to see the live re um the live stream uh, before it released. Which, Me, honestly... I, I, I saw, saw this one. I saw, I yeah, saw see, Shampoo, not I Trashy. Saw, I thought that was the Trailblazer, so that's complete my bad. I should have clocked it wasn't him, because the fucking fist was purple. <laughs> Damn it, man. All right, now that I know that, that is Sampo, that, that's changed my whole theory on the bloody thing. If you remember at the end of your Reload 6, didn't Sampo, like, was talking to a TV? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he was and almost there, breaking the fort wall, kind of. The oh, way yeah. That, yeah. I'm suspecting, like, a lot of people have got theories going around saying that, you know, Sampo might be, like, a hidden member of the Celeron Hunters. You, What if you short, shorten Sampo's name? Take off the P.O.? Damn. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Could be so, that. That could be that. That could, I think we might have potentially just cancelled out the previous theory, I mean, but... We can't, we, well, let's not cancel and too much. green is wind, and that's what Sampo's element is. Yeah, that could be it. Um, we, it, so, no, I, I'm not, I'm not cancelling it. I'm not cancelling it, because there's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that as two theories, so, like... Absolutely. Yeah, and there that's will one be of the two theories of this because thing. Yeah. Look at him. Look at him here. He's his little thing is all freaking purple here for some very weird reason. So yeah, like why the hell are you purple, bro? You're a wind character. <laughs> You're a decent wind character as well for a four star. So that worries me. <laughs> <laughs> so he is he is um very mysterious too. So like he's. Also, like chill and like mischievous in a way. So, and then that ending of Bellabog, that it it's there's definitely some kind of hidden agenda. Um, I it's just that I don't know if because um, well I need to watch that video more. But um, I love Trashy. Yeah. Already. So I don't know if this is gonna be like a new ability or if this is just some kind of dream thing for sure but i know we we will also fight um trashy in the game so like so like i don't know i don't know what's going on on this part yeah i mean that could i mean this could suggest another dreamscape thing because that's the thing because this is all technically like a dreamscape world kind of differing the dreams from reality could become a very big part of the story why as well why Sampo, like, the fact though. that Sampo is there, like, if you remember through the dialogue options, there is a constant, like, kind of reminder that we don't really know a lot about Sampo. It's like, oh, so we got a, you know, like, Dan Han says, oh, so only one question remains. The Trailblazer has the option to say, just who is this Sampo character? Natasha also mentions that Sampo just earned up one day, which mm -hmm. suggests that he's not a Bellabog native. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Mm hmm Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. I can see why people think he's a Stellaron Hunter. I personally don't think he is a Stellaron Hunter. I think that's too predictable. Um, he could be maybe, like, say, um, another agent. Because I heard one person say that they theorized that Sampo could be a part of the IPC. But the IPC wasn't even aware that Bellabog survived the Stellaron Crisis. And that was the whole reason Topaz went to Bellabog to, was to basically get money, mm -hmm. which Bellabog didn't have for obvious reasons. 
<laughs> so that could potentially, um, well, multiple theories. One, it could suggest that there is another party at play within Palakone. Yeah. It also suggests that Sampo's got some sort of alliance with the Stellaron Hunters for his own game, but he's not actually an out like a member of the Hunters. Obviously, if so, that would be the case of what's his ad- agenda. Yeah. Or we could just be, or this could just be, you know, something that Hovers has thrown in just to troll us. Obviously, announce that you know Trashy is becoming a genuine enemy, and this could be like maybe linked to like some sort of dream that the Trailblazer falls into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So honestly, they could go so many different directions from here. He could. Sampo could also be acting a little bit independent too, in some way, um, mm. and. Um, and but the thing is, even if it's dream, uh, even if it's dream, um, why Sampo of all people though? In terms, of that? yeah, he's not kind of the main spotlight attention. We kind of moved. I don't want to say this sound rude because I know that there are Sam Sampo fangirls and boys out there, but he's just not been really relevant these past the, like this past region. So why would he come back now? Unless that also suggests we may bump into Sampo in Panacone, because obviously technically the region's opened up now. So yeah. that could be another theory. But again, I don't... Th- I feel like the Hyoverse are going to want to focus on the new characters rather than old ones outside of the, off- the Astral Express crew. So I'm not too sure. This is probably the one thing I'm not actually 100% on, really. Yeah, I am I have no idea. Um, It's very confusing. <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I, I saw something. Um, so this building... Oh, well, I I, I can't say. I, I almost thought this could have been Bellabog, but it's too much in- constructive to be... I don't yeah. know. I don't know what building... The, what what these buildings would be, actually. I don't know. Hmm. It, it can't... It doesn't look like Bellabog. It doesn't look like Penacani. I, I don't know. Yeah, it could be an extension of Panacone. Like this could be maybe where the old, uh, old like prison cells used to be for the criminals. Yeah. Oh yeah, probably. Hmm. Imagine Sampo was like an ex-criminal who escaped from Panacone and went to Dorito Six. Yeah. Hmm. Sampo would have some dodgy shit for his crimes. Honestly, he'd probably be like a fraudster or something. Exactly. <laughs> All right, here, 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 here. Okay, so she's behind us again. This is this is um this is the precious girl though. This is the precious girl that's behind the trailblazer right now. But mm-hmm. look, look, I I I wonder if you're gonna catch it um from here. Okay. Did yeah, you catch she it? disappears. Yeah. So that's another symbolizing thing about her. It, it, something sad. That precious girl that's is some, definitely... Something bad's gonna happen, boys. Yep, it's going to be sad. And and he was like, he was like, ooh, I caught something too. But but that's he was about to look. He was about to look back when she disappeared. So either mm-hmm. something sad or that's her ability. I don't know. But so far, that looks like a sad symbol. So far. Yeah. Yeah. That's- 100%. And look at Akira. She's crying. She's crying. Yeah. Why is she crying? Why is Queen crying? I wonder why. We know nothing about her, so we we can't really say too much, but... Hmm. Do we really know anything about any of these characters, that, though, realistically? That is true. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe she's crying that she's feeling guilty or something or or something. Could be a, it could be a link to a past thing because, obviously, she said she claims to be a galaxy ranger, but that could mean bloody anything. That's true. And then there's Sam showing off here, so... Hmm. He's, and Sam's glowing. Exactly, huh? And then the nice little dancing here. So it's gonna 
Pentacon is definitely going to be a fun one. So absolutely, I think I think I can speak on behalf of the whole Honkai Star Rail community when I say that, like, I have never seen a region be this hyped before. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you know, when the CNJ came out, it was like, right, okay, cool, we got another region coming. By the time it really got, like, good, good, mm-hmm. we were kind of already through most of the CNJ. But with this, they seem to be releasing a lot of new characters and new stuff at the very beginning. Meanwhile, with the CNJ, we kind of stuck with Tin Yun and Yukon for quite a bit. Obviously, we met Jin Yuan through the, um, you know, like, the uh, hieroglyph. I think that's what they call it, or hologram. I think that's the actual word. But here, they're announcing loads of new characters off the bat, and obviously that does link into the fact that we're going in to, for a celebration, not necessarily because of a Stellaron this time. So that could also be like, well, why are the Stellaron hunters attending this banquet if a Stellaron burst? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, and I th- I'm hoping we're going to get a lot more information about the Stellarons as well, because I... Mm-hmm constantly pursuing them basically right even though that's not really our main job being on the astral express but like i'm looking at this like look like look at the scenery here yeah very yeah. las vegas looking very banquet slash um you know uh hmm. i'm just getting the really big vibe that the stellaron hunters are there because maybe they're either a trying to acquire the stellaron that originally burst or maybe they're trying to gather some sort of information, or like they did with the Cienjo. Um, you know, they could be trying to get the um to get the MC more allies preparing to fight Nanook. Because we only know that because that's what Elio told Kafka. That is true, yeah. And there's been no mention of Elio yet outside of, you know, the in dialogue. We've not potentially seen him at all. Hmm. Which could suggest to me that he might be coming out in the next region. But Possibly. if we meet Elio, we've got some serious questions to ask him. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. It is. He's a character of mystery. Mm-hmm. Well, that was an awesome, awesome discussion. A bunch of things. We totally don't know anything, but we were discussing on what, what, what we are predicting. Memberly, thank you so much for discussing some prediction and, and analyzing this video with me. It's of course, anytime. It was really nice because I don't know why this this video got me really analyzing with what what might happen. I'm super duper excited for Pentaconi though. Yeah, me too. It's nice as well because it doesn't really feel like the content is dried out for Honkai Star Rail, but it's. We've had enough of a break. Because, like, I remember when Cade moved to the UK, because obviously this was before we got married. I kept telling him to you still use his, like, Trailblaze power daily. And he was like, oh, but I'm just going to get all in reserve. Why do I need to do that? I was like, because Palacani's coming. And if it's anything as difficult as what we've already got in the Sienjo, we're going to need our characters leveled, boy, because we're going to be dealing with some tough-ass enemies. <laughs> like, that, like, that dragon that can one-shot you... That is scaring me. That is, for sure. Yeah. I can actually see that being like a Forgotten Hall um, stage. Mm-hmm. That boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so I've seen some people like solo run things with Blade and my anxiety is like always peaking because he's always about to die. <laughs> you can't do that with this one, boy. <laughs> well, I am having Jing Liu, so my allies will be... Oh. Will be something, but I am meaning Jing Liu, so. <laughs> yeah, then you just, and I'm, I'm a Kafka mate. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that will probably be it for this little discussion video. Thank you, Memberly, for being part of it. Um, the um, Memberly's um, links to her channels will be down in the description um of this video um but if you enjoyed that um make sure to give it a like um subscribe to my channel and memberly's channel um and all that stuff and um leave leave down in the comments below um what you guys would probably think um but yeah um 
that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you all have a good one. Take it easy.